Hi, in this video, we're gonna talk about recording. Recording different guitar riffs, licks, blend them together to create something super catchy. This is exactly how it's done in the studios. But before we get into this video, I wanna tell you about a free course. Now this course is free just because you're watching this video. It's something that I'm actually selling on my website. It is called the Jam Track Live Course, which is a masterclass that was recorded a few years back and made in a course package completely free. The link is below just because you're watching this video. I don't know how long I'm gonna leave it for free. So check it out, redeem the free course below. Grab your guitar, we will get started right after this. Hi, my name is David Wallerman. Welcome to this channel, which is all about helping guitar players around the world develop their musical personality on the instrument. And a great way to do that is by recording. Now, this is not gonna be a technical lesson as in use the compressor this way, reverb this way, and so, no, this is nothing like that. We're just gonna talk about combining different rhythm sections together to create something that um, becomes something new. Two different parts put together become a new part. That's kind of what we're talking about today. I'm gonna to do this in Logic. That's my sequencer, my DAW of choice, but you can use anything you want. Uh, all right, let's get started. Let's get to the computer. We've got a switch right here. We switched. Yes, we did. Okay, so this right here is uh, Logic. I started my session. This is usually how I start. I start with drums. Now, why do we have two tracks? Because I like to, to have a traditional drum track, which is what you're hearing right now. And I like to combine that with something else, another rhythm pulse. And I use um, a software called Spectrosonic, uh, where is Stylus, uh, Stylus right here. This thing right here, it's awesome. Okay, I've used that for a few years. And this is uh, the loop that I picked from that software. Something to add in, right? So two very different parts, but if you play them together, that's what you get. Now I could have combined any parts because they're synced and usually they're gonna sound pretty good. That's what I have. I usually start with the drums, then I add some bass. So I'm gonna add a bass track here. Just gonna be a softer instrument. And uh, I promise we're gonna to get to the guitar, to the core of the lesson, but I wanted to show you the process and how easy it is once you know a few things. I'm gonna pick a bass. That's fine. Um, what can we do? Simple. I don't know what the notes I'm playing. Yeah, that works. In my mind, I've got that rhythm pulse, which is very important. Let's record that, okay? Then we'll get to the guitar. I'm gonna show you something really cool. All right, let's just try this. Very simple, right? No, hard to talk with when I do that. No extra cool bass stuff. I don't care about that. Okay, so I got, I got that recorded. I'm gonna quantize this. So for those of you who don't know, quantizing is making everything really uh, lock into tempo. I'm gonna quantize the 16th and um, we'll copy and paste this. Okay, so now this is where it becomes interesting. I have this, right? Um, now, this is kind of a G, G minor, pentatonic, and to be completely honest, this backing track was something that I was recording earlier today for a lesson that I'm gonna film Monday, but I thought I'd show you the process. It's very interesting, I think. So we got this. All right. Over there, it's for a, a G minor blues. And so forth. Now, I'm gonna add some guitars. This is where it becomes really cool. I'm gonna add a guitar track using my XFX3 here and uh, make sure that I get the right inputs right here. I'm actually gonna record two, two guitar tracks. I'm gonna just cl clone this. And I'm just gonna loop this section and just kind of play. And because I'm thinking rhythm, my, my first thing when I'm playing rhythm is to be counterintuitive than when I started playing. When I started playing, I thought rhythm was, you know, big chord. <laughs> which it is sometimes, but I found that it's much more effective to 
uh, to really play less. Less is more because we're gonna add more and more parts. So instead of thinking, you know, a lot of notes at the same time, just a few. I'm gonna think more riff based. So I've got, that's my rhythm pulse. That's my guideline. Okay, so I'm just gonna play over this several times. Let's uh, make a quick uh, a little switch here. I'm just letting that go and just kind of jamming over this. Here you are. Okay, that's cool. Until I find something. Trying to catch that C. Maybe I could just continue that with the fingers. Okay. I'm trying to find something way simpler than that. Yeah. No, notice that I'm using my fingers here. It sounds a little different than the pick. It allows my thumb to do those ghost notes on the fifth string there. So we're gonna record this, okay? Okay, so I'm gonna enable record here. Let's just record this first track. Okay, I got a track here. I'm gonna add a second track. Now here is where you might be tempted to play the same thing. We're not gonna do that. We're gonna play something completely different that complements that. So if I'm listening to this, I got the bass. The bass occupies that space right here. I got the drums, the, the drums are several things going on. There's the hi-hats, that's a little bit higher. The bass here, and then I've got my da ba ba the, the da da ba 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 the, what I just recorded. It's kind of this space right here. Everything has a space, right, EQ-wise. Right. The bass right here, the guitar is probably here, and the drums are higher than that. So I'm not gonna compete with any other instruments. I'm gonna try to find something in the guitar range, so probably between the bass and uh, the drums with the hi-hats. So something in here, but not exactly where where that is playing. See, that, that guitar right here is playing in that zone of the fretboard. I'm gonna go higher, maybe. I can't really go lower than that. The bass is gonna conflict with that. So, um, I dropped my pick in the process here. Where's my pick? Okay, here it is. So since I have that, Maybe I'm gonna do something uh, rhythmically that complements that and a little bit higher. Yeah. A little different, right? So we're gonna record this. Okay, so I'm just gonna record it on top of it. I'm gonna do a first pass. I'm not gonna practice. We'll see what happens. Okay, okay, there's that C that I want to catch. So I'm gonna try that again, okay? Here it is. Breathes more, right? Yeah. 
So I'm complementing the space here. Now I have these two tracks that if I play them together, they both have their space. We're gonna add separation. So we're gonna do uh, one to the right, one to the left. I don't know, maybe the, the lower to the left. Just listen, do you like this? If not, maybe reverse it. Yeah, I prefer the, prefer it this way. Let's add everything, okay? Breathe a lot more. Nothing. Now if I jam over this, that's a great backing track. We'll use this in the, the lesson that I'll film. The concept, well, you'll have to discover that on Monday. I know this track is, is a good one because I want to keep jamming. And that's kind of what, uh, it's a sign of a, it, for me, this is a usable thing. Um, but that was just an example, right? We're going to switch back to a clean tone. So what do you, what do you get out of this? I don't know. Well, you get out of this that two very different things combined together become a new thing, right? That's really the rhythm section. There are two parts, but they make this new thing. Uh, keep in mind, it just another thing to remember, don't compete with different things. Both guitars have their own space in the mix. If you have the bass, this has its own space too. And the drums they have their own space too. This, this feels fuller to me. Now, could I add anything here? Well, I, I don't think so. I mean, I could, but... I think it'll just compete with the space of the other things. Let's let's try another thing, okay? Let's try another example, completely different. Just to see. We're gonna start with the same uh, drums just to keep things simple. So I'm just gonna, in my mind, I'm gonna try something, we'll see. Oops, sorry, I was on the wrong track here. I need to, there we go. I don't know what that is. It doesn't matter. It fits rhythmically, which is good enough for me. I'm gonna quantize this. Maybe not as simple as the previous one, but. Okay, I'm gonna learn this. Na-da-da-p. What when am I in? I'm just gonna loop this. And we're doing the same exact thing, right? That we did previously. I'm just gonna record two different tracks. I'm gonna, I'm gonna kill the delay here. I don't want any delay. That's another important thing. No delay, at least for this. What key am I on? I was using some black ones there. Okay, I'm in G sharp. <laughs> Getting somewhere. Okay, there's something here. The blah, blah, I don't like that. But I could make it uh, sound a little better, but I don't have time here. So, right here. I'm gonna go straight to the bottom, and I'm gonna make things. Na, da, ta, ta. A blue note in there. Okay, so this is what we have. I'm just gonna keep jamming. Ah, something missing there. I'm, I'm searching, still searching here. Da, da. No. 
Yeah, that's it. That's the one. Okay, so let's record this. Same process, right? Ah, kind of messed up. I really want to be synced there. Okay, we'll just loop that. So we got one. Now you know what to do, right? We want to add a second part that doesn't compete. So now this part was, oops, a little bit higher. So maybe the next part would be a little lower there. Um, in the previous example, I used uh, one kind of like this, rhythm, riffy, funky, and some chords. You could do that too. Yeah. I like this. It's off. I love it. Let's record this. Cool. Now with a pan, this is what we have. I think we need to jam now. That's the ultimate test, right? So much fun and so simple, really. Just just force yourself to, to go with your guts. Think rhythmically, think um, less is more, and um, just two very different guitar parts with each part having its own space will create like something really, I think, really engaging, really fun to jam with, and, and I love it. And uh, well, that's what I had for you today. Those two tracks that I just worked on today, I'm probably gonna use them in a future video. So stay tuned for those and make sure that you grab the free Jam Track Live course that uh, is available for a limited time. It's completely free. It's something that I saw on my website, but hey, it's yours to keep. If uh, the link is still active below, check it out. And if you haven't subscribed yet, well, consider doing it if you liked what you saw. Usually we talked about we talk about concepts here on the, on the channel, like scales and chords and things like that. But really the end result, the, the end goal is to help guitar players everywhere develop their own musical personality. All right, well, that's what I have for you today. Thanks so much for watching. Practice well, and I'm gonna go back to jamming. I'll see you next time.